Good morning, Flosstube. My name is Laura, and I'd like to welcome you to Stitching by the Shore, my channel all about cross-stitch with a little bit of paper crafting thrown into. And if you are new, I'd like to say welcome. Thank you so much for pressing play and giving my channel a try. I hope you like what you see. Hit like, subscribe, all of that good stuff and uh, come back for more. And if you're a returning stitching friend who has come back, thank you so much. I really do appreciate you being here and your support and sharing cross stitch with you. It is the highlight of my week to be able to share stitching with all of you. So thank you. And a big, huge, giant thanks. I won't say much at the beginning because I know some of you don't really want to hear about life stuff, but in case you do have to bug out early, I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you, whether you made a comment or you didn't, whether you sent an email or a text, whatever, or you didn't, it, 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 if you just thought, oh, I hope everything's okay with Laura. I just so appreciate it. You are all just a wonderful, wonderful community. And it, it just meant so much after I had shared last week. So thank you. All right. I have two scrapbook pages and I have an ornament to show you. So let's do the scrapbook pages first because they're simple and they're small. So let's do those. Okay. So this first one, this is, I think it's called Good Morning from Setsuma Street. And I don't know, I think it was just the bright colors of Satsuma that drew me to this because I'm not sure otherwise. It's not something I would, well, I don't put any of my cross stitch really up, but I, I don't know if I would have put something like this up, but I just adored the brightness and the colors of it. So that's why I stitched it. And you can see it's pretty simple. So this is going to be in my, I call it my six by eight book. It's a little bit more like a nine by six. I think the actual book itself measures nine by eight. I can show you actually, it's this one right here. It's this size book. Um, but it's basically when I do the base size, it's six, I think in an eighth, I have it written down and the eight and a half, I believe is this way. So I just call it my six by eight book just cause that's easier. And all I did with this one was I found a piece of cardstock that really kind of, I, I decided to go with the orange and bring that out versus any of the other colors. And then I had this great little um, patterned paper. I put it just on the top just to add a little bit of extra. You could just put your piece right on a piece of cardstock and call it a day. You don't even have to, have to add all those little things. Just as an aside, I have, I haven't bought any in a while, but I know they do have them. I bought a lot of them when I was doing card making either six by six pattern paper books. If I think about it next time I do one of these, I'll, I'll show you a couple sizes uh, because I'm looking at them, but they're across the room right now or an eight by eight. And those are great if you want to add. So this one came from, I believe an eight by eight book and I went three inches down with it. It's just on the edges and I still have more of that to go. So it's great when you want pieces. You couldn't, unless you were just doing a dedicated amount in let's say a 12 by 12 page, it doesn't work quite as easy. Or you could do different like strips of colors of, of papers. You can mix and match. But for something like this, if you just wanted to add the little tiniest bit of something extra, they are a bit more affordable than if you buy them by as a 12 by 12 book. And it's just something to think about if you wanted to add little splashes of some paper. But uh, you'd certainly be good to go if you just wanted to put your piece right onto the cardstock. If you're new, I do have um, Pellin 950F interfacing attached to my cross stitch. And then after I attach it, I will cut it down to the size I want for the pages. Um, and somebody did ask me, was the interfacing archival? I went and I Googled it and I looked at Pellin and Pellin said that their interfacing is acid free you make your decisions whether you feel comfortable using it or not. I have no problem using it. It's going to be fine in, in, in my lifetime. So it's fine. Um, and uh, now this one will just go into my scrapbook. And my scrapbooks, if you're wondering, the page protectors are acid-free. I do get specific ones on that too. Scrapbookers really like the acid-free stuff. So that is an option. Then the other one, oops, I had my book on it. I had this one sitting on my desk for a while and I knew I wanted to use this. I had this leftover pattern paper from one of my other scrapbook pages and I had left it out and I had this piece and I said, oh, those blues go great. 
So again, all I did was I found a base blue and I went, I went along the same lines of the blue, but I decided to go darker. This I think is, this might be Pacific Point for my Stampin' Up friends. I don't think that's a color anymore. I think they've got discontinued it, but it's a great kind of blue. I really like that one. And this way I have all different shades from kind of the grunged look of the blue to the lighter, which ties right in. And that's really it. Again, you could just put this on the on the cardstock if you wanted to, or you add just a little bit and it's all set and it's done. I want to say this is probably called Beach House. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, and I want to say either Country Cod. I think it's Country Cod at Tito Works would be my guess. Oh, I just said <laughs> a giant bee just slammed right into the window right here. <laughs> Bumblebee. <laughs> Oops. Um, anyway, so uh, so that's, that's that one. And I took the book because I did want to show you. So what happens then is, so my book has, here's the empty page protectors. And for example, here are the pages in the protectors. Now, all I have to do is slide their top loading protectors. I just slide the pages right in. And if I want to, so for example, here, I have two kind of fall pieces. If I wanted to slip in the summer one, like if I wanted to do kind of a chronological, I can put it in a new one and I can just put it somewhere else, or I can take these out and readjust them however I want. So it's really nice in that sense. I always do them so they fit comfortably without, you know, there, there's not a lot of extra room, but they slide nicely. Because if they're too tight, then I worry about kind of, um, if I wanted to take them in and out, uh, you know, dinging the edges, so to speak. And I meant to actually, I had this one out and I meant to show you on the back, I didn't put it on there because I couldn't remember. I kept saying, I think I kept thinking it was called Hello Rooster and I knew it wasn't. It's good morning. Um, so I'm just going to put, I have like little um, junk journal labels and I'll use all different things. It's not going to be the same on the backs, but, and I'll put good morning Satsuma Street. I don't know if I'd bother with the other info on it because, um, I have a book that gives me all of my project information and there's nothing about this that I would journal. If I had things I wanted to talk about with the piece, I would use a bigger um, either label or cardstock or something else. And then when it's on the back, for example, you're not gonna see the backs of these because they're back to back to other pieces. So nobody will ever know unless you take them out. So those are my two scrapbook pages and I'm going to put those down there. I definitely want to step up. Um, and what I think what I'd like to do is I'd like to take the projects out, see what I have for card stocks and papers. And then if I need to make an order at scrapbook.com, I can kind of deliberately order rather than just kind of willy nilly picking things that I like, which <laughs> seems to be what I do normally. Or um, another one that I really like is Frantic Stamper. I want to say she's in the Pacific Northwest, if I remember. Uh, and she usually has a lot of stock and supplies. There's plenty of other places as well um, if you were looking for things. My Michaels doesn't have a lot, really. Um, and we don't have any uh, scrapbook stores or anything in our area. I don't really know if there's many left anymore. Alrighty. Now, last week, you remember that I finished Flamingo Frolic by Helen D., and I just, I buckled down and I got it fully finished and I made it into an ornament. So there it is. Oh, it's the, the lights, the, the, the greens. Oh, there we go. Right there. Glaring on it. Now, if you are new, I'm a fairly simple finisher. I like things, uh, for me, just nice and simple. There's not usually a lot of bows or a lot of extra things. I love looking at those finishes. Um, just for me, I just happen to do it a little differently. Now, let's talk about this. I'm so excited and I'm so proud of myself for doing an oval. I have done only, all of my finishes have only been squares and rectangles. And this guy, I mean, it's, it was perfect as an oval. I mean, I could have done, I would have done a rectangle. That was my backup if I couldn't figure out how to do this. But I really thought given the, um, dimensions that an oval would be really nice. So I have a, it's a big shot uh, from Ellison, I think is the company. It's a manual die cutting machine. There are 
other ones um, that are electronic, you know, crickets and all of those that you can die cut shapes and things like that as well. I just used the manual one. I think I had one that was electric and I just, it just didn't work for me. <laughs> I ended up selling it to somebody in one of my Connecticut groups, uh, crafting groups in the end and just kept with my big shot. That's just one type. I have a cuddle bug as well, but I use that just for uh, for the embossing. But anyway, I digress. So I have accumulated, you know, all different shapes and sizes of metal dies. So I did have oval metal dies. I figured out which one would work well with this, uh, with the flamingo. And I use the comic book comic book board uh, backing, which if you're wondering is acid free because the comic board book, comic book collectors, it's paper. So they want to make sure it's acid free. So I use that and it's, it's not a super thick one. So I was actually able to die cut with my die cutter that, um, that board. So I die cut it the shape I wanted. And now I was all excited. I have watched Helen D's tutorial. Helen D's wonderful with her tutorials. And, you know, I gathered my, oh, the back looks awful. I, I have some mistakes I made. Not awful. That's a wrong term. It, it just, I've learned, I've learned some things from the first and what my second time will be. So I gathered it all up and I sewed along the edges and then pulled it. And then I went back and forth and all of that. Um, thinking, okay, I can do this. I can do this. And I couldn't get it even and straight in the oval like I wanted. And I, you know, and I kept trying and I was like, hmm. It just, I am a paper crafter at heart. So I said, I'm taking a step back and I'm going to do what I know best. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm just not a sewer. And I just couldn't figure out how to make it work the way I wanted to. So if you've watched any of my scrapbooking videos, you know that much of my tape is acid free. So again, I don't particularly worry about it. Whenever I attach anything to ornaments, I do put some tape in the front and I don't actually interface this kind of stuff. You could certainly, um, I just put it on the board itself and I attach the, um, where I want my piece. It's not like Gorilla Grew stick. Like it's not like, Oh, this thing is never moving again with it. It's enough just to basically keep it in place while I'm manipulating everything. And then I do all of the gluing and taping on the back. So I, I put some of my tape on the front. I laid where I wanted my piece and then I flipped it over and I should have, and at one point, if I do another one, I'll try to film a tutorial for those of you who are maybe paper crafters at heart as well. There is another way to do these things, right? And I just kept, I had tape all along the edges all along the edges and I would take a section, fold it over and I kept kind of doing that. So it was almost like a ruffle type of thing at the back. And let me show you, I don't know if you can see, you see how it's kind of ruffled like that. I didn't glue anything down. There was just a layer of tape there that kind of kept it superficially. And I just kept doing that rough, that bending down and ruffling all the way around until I was around. And then I got out my glue and I started to glue in different places and so on and, and to try to keep everything down and, and attached. I have one little area you'll see that's not 100% smooth, but I am going to go back. I can, I can, see, there's wiggle room. So I'm going to go back with the glue and I should be able to smooth that out. And then I think there's one down at the bottom too. But if somebody's looking at it from a distance, they're not going to necessarily know that. I was, I was curious to see what would happen if I did it this way, if I could get the edges smooth like I see so many people who do the sewing part of it, get it smooth. And I was really happy with the results and excited that I could do it this way because I know how to do this. This is, this I've been paper crafting since 1992. And even though I cross stitched before that, I paper crafted all that time and took the break from cross stitch. So I feel very comfortable when you've got, give me glues and tapes and papers and all that good stuff. So it is possible. And then what I did was I took the felt that I showed you last week and I again used my um, die cutter and I had the oval scallop that was just slightly bigger than this piece and I cut that out. Now thoughts on the Benzi felt. I got the blend. So it was part merino wool, part knot. 
it's nice, but it's not as thick as the full wool. So I think, and I'll use it. I, I got, you know, bunches of different colors to try it and see and so on and so forth. Like I got some of the sets, which was kind of cool. And I think for this, I picked a couple different pinks uh, because it's not too super expensive. But I think if I want to do felt that's going to hold up on its own, I think I want something that is slightly thicker. So I will strategically buy certain colors in the full 100% wool, which are is slightly more expensive, but you can buy small, you know, you can buy a dedicated smaller piece. So you're not breaking the bank on trying to get this huge roll of something. Um, I probably could have doubled it and far away, you're not going to notice, but I just didn't really feel like it trying to attach all the scallops and everything else nice and easily without it gapping. And then I did put um, just some gray felt on the back. I could have done any color. One thing I did notice that I did want to show. So because I have the ruffling and the gathering, if I do it again, I will put a little bit layer of what's the fluffy stuff that a lot of people put to I've just blanked out on the name. You all know what it is. You all know what it is. Warm and natural batting. That's it. Um, I'll put a thin layer of batting here so that it will inside where the ruffles are. So it'll be about the same. And then I'll attach the backing on there. And I just did a very simple black and white. Um, I had like a tan because I, I didn't have a lot of small. thin. I like the thin ribbons. That's my preferred for... Um, when I do these types of ornaments and I had that on there and I wasn't loving it. It was just kind of eh, bland. And then I happened to look down and I saw I had a, some of this and I thought that was nice. And you've got the black, you know, a little bit in the flamingo itself. So it kind of ties it all in pink and black or pink and black and pink and brown. Great color combination there too. But the brown I used was too tannish. So it didn't really go. And because this is more black, I kind of tied that all in. So there it is. Now I can hang this up for summer. So that will go on my Hirschner's tree. Alrighty. And that's that. So that's my all the, that's my full finish for an ornament and my two full finishes for scrapbook pages. Now let's go on to, I'm just going to put that in the scrapbook pages. Let's go on to all my current open projects. I have 10 projects to show you, one of which is a start and I have no finishes. Alrighty, so the first one, I did a lot of digitals this week. So my iPad's going to get lots of use. You know how when you have so many tabs open <laughs> that you can barely see the tabs sometimes? That's me. I have almost all my projects are... <laughs> oh, let's see if I can do this way and make it bigger. Well, it's just not going to... But you know what? Fine. You can see it. I'll go this way because it is a little bit bigger. Well, so from Crusota Gogo. -Go, my poppies in summer. That's what it looks like. I'm going with a little bit lighter fabric, but I did go with the neutral fabric on this one. And this one's slow going for me, but I figure if I pick it up every once in a while and do a little bit, then it will eventually get done. I'd like to see this one done for 2023. So if I do a little bit, every once in a while, and then we'll reevaluate as the year ends if I can get it finished with it. What's a killer for me, if it was just the flowers, it'd be fine. The border is beautiful. I've done one of these already. I did the daisies, and it's a repeating border, but it's just very repetitive. And I did do some. I think I did, I did some flower, and then I did do some of the top just to kind of continue back and forth with it. This is done on an 18 count Old West fabric from Color and Cotton, which is slightly different than what I did the daisies on. Oops, you can see <laughs> I had a little bit. This one will be scrapbook just like the daisies. I'll scrapbook them so that they're a side by side kind of open book page. So that's what it looks like. Uh, this weekend, uh, when I talk about my plans, this might see a little bit of, of work just because of the way the plans are working this weekend. We'll see. Okay. Let me flip it this way. Now, see, this one will open up. I don't get it. So I pulled out. This one's going to be in timeout for a minute because I do have to do some adjusting. But I pulled out my Haunted Library style from Lola Crow Designs. 
I've seen people start. So she, Lola Crow has a new mystery stitch along for this year. I don't do mystery stitch alongs because I am one that needs to see what it looks like before I decide my fabrics and stuff. But it looks really cool. It looks really cool. So I think right now they've just released kind of the outer edges of it because I want to say it's like a greenhouse and then I'll have fun kind of stuff with it. So maybe next year you'll see me stitching that one once it's done. It's cool. So this one you would have seen a lot last year because a lot of people stitched it as a mystery. And yeah, I did go a little wild with my fabric. This is 18 count Imagine. I'm looking at my notes. I didn't spell imagine correctly. I left out the two letters, I, the last two letters. I'm not sure why, uh, but this imagine. And yes, this is probably my most, ver um, I want to say variegated, I'd say modeled. This is my most modeled fabric that I'm stitching on right now. And normally you won't, I like modeling normally not quite this much, but with this project and the um, subject, I thought it was just so much fun. And I, again, a lot of it's going to be filled in. So you'll see like, for example, here you've got the opening by him, but it's not too, it's not very modeled. And the modeling will be more along the edges, some of which we'll get will keep some of it. So for example, here you'll have, I think it's books. It's books here. Um, so you'll see maybe some of it, but not all of it. So I'm really interested to see how this comes about uh, when it's all said and done. So I did a little bit of everything, to be honest with you. I did work a little bit on filling in more of the books. I think I have, I filled in some more of the book and then I started another one. I did quite, a bit more here with the border or you know the actual bookcase and more along here and then my mistake I was working on the librarian and I was talking at the time and I want to say back here there's a mistake so I was I had done that didn't realize it and then I started to do the black and it's not adding up correctly so I have to do some kind of backwards backtracking and I need to see if I can keep it the way it is and I can kind of finagle it or is she going to look funny and do I need to pull it hopefully if I have to pull let me see the back for a minute yeah I didn't carry so if I have to pull I'm just pulling out this section you know maybe 15 20 um stitches type of thing uh, so it's not like a huge chunk that I would have to pull out. So this one might go in a little bit of a timeout right now, just because I'm going to have to really evaluate that part. I really wanted to get her done at the librarian, you know, haunted librarian, because I thought it'd be kind of cool. It's such a cool when you see people stitched it. She looks fantastic. The coloring is great how they, how it's been designed. And then, you know, kind of work my way down. <laughs> but. We all make mistakes sometimes, right? I was talking at the time and I enjoyed the conversation. So, you know, now we just have to pull some stitches out. That's all. I have, this is my one kind of full coverage piece that you're gonna see on a more regular basis because I really am enjoying it. And there are sections with huge chunks of color. So, um, I find it's a nice one if I want to just sit and stitch a chunk of color. This is, so I'm calling it Beach Girl in a Red Dress. It just has your typical Etsy title of, you know, just different phrase type, different phrases title. This is from Simple Wave Studio. And the artwork is from, by Jennifer Camp. I have the red dress girl and I have two girls that are in the white dresses. And um, I'm really enjoying this. This is the first time I've done Simple Wave. Simple Wave has a lot of full coverage, but it also has non-full coverage. It, it has a nice variety of different um, stitches. And this one, what's nice is it's full coverage, but it is only 150 by 188. So if you were to stitch it on 14 count, which is what they show, it'd be 11 by 13. I'm doing it on 18 count white Ada. So mine will be smaller than that. 
and that's what it looks like. I did a lot of fill in here for the blue. I've got this filled in, I brought in here. So now we're at the horizon. So that gray is signifying the horizon. There'll be some more water before I get down to the, you know, kind of the beach grass and the sand. This area here is a huge swath of that beige. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this is it, that's the edge. So that can show you right there. But I did all of this to get to the edge to kind of see where I was. I want to double check and count, make sure I did it correctly before I really just do that chunk and then have to finagle here. So what I'm going to do is I will do a count, make sure I've got it exactly right. And then what a great zoom time that would be where I could just, if especially if I did edges and then all I have to do is fill in. I mean, because really beige, who wants to be stitching huge chunks of beige on your own, right? So it's a great one if I'm chatting or doing something that... I don't need to think or count or whatever. Um, for my full coverages, I do two strands over one full cross on the 18 count. And I like it. This is the start of her hair. I didn't do anything more with that. I, I think I did a little bit here with some colors, but I really concentrate. So this is all, except for a few stray stitches, this is all now filled in. And this got a good 500 stitches this week. It's especially with these chunks, it's easy to get that in there. So I do like doing it as well as another full coverage sometimes during the week. So you'll see that one on and off, I'd say. Okay, next. Next is my 25-7 piece that you've been seeing recently. So I stitch on it 25-ish minutes a day, every day. Again, I'll usually pick... Um, I'll pick, maybe I'll pick a video and you know, usually sometimes they're 25 minutes, sometimes they're 30, 35 minutes. I pick one along there and uh, you know, I'll stitch along with it. Sometimes um, if I'm behind on some of my shows, I'll just watch a, a show and I'll just look at the time. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll say, I'll do three strands because I know that's about the, the 30, 35 ish minute time frame. Uh, so, um, and if you'd like to join a Facebook group that, uh, is purely 25, seven cross stitch, Melody Watkins, the soulful stitcher created a Facebook group just for, um, all of us to share our 25, seven pieces. So if you would like to, um, you can check it out and I'll put the information. I have not yet figured out how to properly link Facebook groups, but when I put the information in the description box, I give you the exact name of the group. So if you search that, it should come up right away. So this is Stitch Rovia. It's called On the Beach. If you wanna see it finished about a week or two, no, the two videos ago, Helen D finished hers. She did it slightly different. She cut off the top sunbathers here and it fit perfectly in a frame for her. It looks gorgeous if you wanna go see what she did. Here's mine. And I am, Except for some backstitching and some stray filling in for some of the umbrellas, I am solidly stuck in water. And I got to tell you, I'm bogged down a little bit. I'm feeling a little bogged down. Because except for the top layer of water, as we go here, it's just between the two. And you'll do the strands. And then you look and you say, oh my God, I have so much water left to do. So this week I did a little bit of water to fill in. And I said, I had a sunbather I could do. Or... I don't know, when they're in the water, I don't know if you're technically called a sunbather. I'm not sure what you're called then, but I, I was like, I'm going to work on this. <laughs> so each day I would pick some parts of that and then I would throw in some water. So if we do this, that's where we are. This is the outer edge. So it'll come down. So that's what I have, but that's a lot of stitches because it's completely full coverage. So it's gonna take me a while yet. Now, I do have this, oh, before I forget, 18 count beach sand is the name of the fabric and it is from To Die For Fabrics. This has been slated for my 24, 25, seven. And I thought about, um, keeping it straight through. At the very least, I was going to keep it through April. I think I'm going to do a little bit of a pivot 
and I'll tell you in not next project, but the project after that, what I'm going to pivot to. I have something that I would like to get finished. And I think the 25 seven, I have noticed for 25 seven, I have picked projects that are closer to a finish. If you'd like to see a really cool experiment, Rachel Q stitches, she's doing a mid Amish life and she's doing all of the parts. Um, and she's been doing it for months now and it is amazing the progress she's made. Um, I haven't picked, this is probably the farthest away from a finish of a 25 seven I'd picked and I didn't necessarily plan on doing it to a finish, but I do have one that I think I'd like to, um, and I just started it. <laughs> so, you know, uh, there's that, but I think I want to put that one as 25 seven cause I would like to maybe in the next three weeks get a finish on it. And I think if I did it every single day for that amount of time, I do think I could get a finish. So this one as of today might go to the side. Um, maybe I'll do one more. This weekend is kind of a, is a free for all weekend. I'll talk about that in plans. So I might do one more set of stitches to get, you know, between 100 and 200 stitches on this one. And then this one might go away for a little bit while the other one gets worked on. Plans are fluid. Plans are never set in stone. Okay. Next. Next, we're going to talk about my black vintage sampler from Owl Forest Embroidery. That's what's going to, that's what it looks like. I always talk about Mary from Mary's Stitching Corner. Um, she is working on this one as well, or she's one of the people working on this as well. And I don't, it's on my list. I'm so far behind on floss tubes <laughs> because I've been stuck. I've been binge watching a Netflix show, but, um, it's on my list. Mary, Mary put out a video this week. So if you like watching Mary's videos, go check out her channel because she's got a new video out this week. Here's mine. I know you look at it and you say, really, Laura, have you done much? But I do try to give it four to 500 stitches a week. I think this one got 500 this week. But whenever I pull it out, this is, this is my, um, not always, but almost always designated Zoom piece. I love doing this one on Zoom because it is so, I pick a, a lot of times I'll pick a motif or I'll pick a part of the border. I'll pick something and I'll just run with it while I'm on Zoom. So this week I did extend the border a little bit, but I think I worked on this twice this week and that part I was working on at night. And now I find the pattern super easy to read during the daytime at night. I was down in the, I was down in my, um, my porch and the lighting is that kind of yellow, softer light. It, I can see, but details start to blend in a little bit. So I couldn't tell cause I take, make a working copy and I highlight as I go. I couldn't tell what was highlighted and what wasn't. And I didn't want to mess up the border. So I kind of, I kind of stopped with the border and I really did a lot of, I did all, all of this kind of down here. So different lights, lighting, and the key. Um, that's a big lantern. This is, there'll be another one right here. And then that, and then that's it on this side, except for border. I have to come back. This is at a page break. So I keep, I'm dreading this part because you see how there's this here. There's another one of those right in the page break. <laughs> so that's the one part I'm kind of dreading. I'm not sure I would do that during Zoom because I'd really, I really have to pay attention and count. But I have plenty of border to do. And then, I mean, honestly, I have plenty of other options. I really want to start working on this part right here. So it's coming along like everything else. And uh, it was my new year, new start this year. First time I've done that. I did not do that in previous years. And I mean, I had wanted to stitch it and I finally found the perfect fabric, which I am off today on my fabrics. 18 count rainy day from Bestitch Me. I had a thought in my mind and this, this is a little bluer than what was in my brain. I think I had a little grayer, but I love it for this piece. And it is all done in anchor black. So, um, yeah. So, oh, I was, I know what I was going to say with a brain. I don't know what it is, but for some reason, I don't know, maybe I'm thinking about the videos on Friday, 
But Thursday nights, I always get seem to get choppy nights rest. And so in the in the mornings, I'm kind of, oh, you know, a little sleepy, a little brain froggy, froggy, foggy. Um, <laughs> I said to Mo this morning, I'm like, people are going to think I never sleep because I always seem to be tired on video days. I'll probably crash this weekend because then I'll be making up the sleep I didn't get last night. I woke up so many times last night. Okay, now my new start. I had showed you this, I think it was last week, as a purchase. And I was super excited to get it started. Who is the company? Oh, it's Awesome Pattern Studio. And it's Philadelphia. And that's the chart right there. They have tons of different cities and the whole bit. I did check Satsuma Street before I found this one here. Satsuma does not have Philadelphia. Um, and I liked the look of this one. It has kind of that same vibe. What I really like about this one is that there are chunks of color. So I think it's going to go fairly quick. I picked Philadelphia because Megan, after graduation, is moving to Philly. So she'll only be a couple of hours away from us. Super exciting. If you don't know, I'm in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, if you are new. So that's where I live. And so traffic dependent, a couple hours away. I'm super excited though. That'll be nice. And uh, that'll be nice that she won't be too far away. So anyway, I wanted to stitch this. I don't necessarily think, like I, I'd be happy to stitch it, frame it. And you know, if she wants to take it, great. I don't necessarily know if she will. Um, so what I will do is I will take some pictures and I, uh, you know, in, in Philly and of her and the whole bit, and it can be scrapbooked with the piece and pictures. It's not very big. It's, can I see what size it is? Um, <laughs> wow, there's a lot of information here. It is, I don't know where the stitch count is, but on 18 count, it is a six by almost five, almost a um, little over six, six by five, little under five. So that'll be the size of it. That's what I have so far. I just started that this week. It's 18 count Nantucket Sky by Fabrics by Stephanie. Nantucket Sky is one of my favorites in 18 count. I don't know what it looks like in other counts or types of fabric. Um, for doing things like this. Because you have like the wispiness of clouds or just a blue sky. And you can, you know, you can play with placement if you want and all of that. So... This is very often a go-to color for me if I'm gonna do anything kind of like this type of piece. I did do my Amsterdam piece on Nantucket Sky as well, from, and that one was from Satsuma. But just one week. So I'm thinking I'm gonna make this the 25-7. Megan graduates in, I wanna say three weeks. I can't believe she's graduating from college already. Ooh, my notes are about to fall. Let me just fix that tape. Middle of May, Mother's Day weekend. That's what we're doing for graduation, uh, or for Mother's Day weekend is we're going to graduation. But, um, so I thought it would be kind of fun to try to get this done by the time she graduates. Now, she doesn't start her job for a few weeks after graduation, and I don't think her, I think the lease on her apartment is not until June 1st. So she's going to come down and stay with us for a few weeks. So if I don't finish it at graduation, I still have a little bit of time before she's like officially moving in. But I think this is one week's work. If I did, you know, 25 minutes, 20 to 35 minutes a day each day, I think I could easily get this one finished. Because like I said, there are there are color changes, but it's kind of chunks of color. It's easy to pick something and just run with it. So I think that's what I might do with that one. So you might be seeing that one now as my 25-7, and we might put on the beach to the side until this one is done. All right, now, <laughs> I have so many tabs open. This is my cross, my full coverage that I did for the week. And it is, it's called Bottled Beauty. And it's cross stitch for everyone is the um, person who charted it. And the artwork is by Fun Digital, I believe. I know, I meant to put it, let's see. I meant to put it in my notes because I usually put who the artwork is by in my notes. I know I saw it. Art by Fun Digital, yes. Isn't that beautiful? I'm up in the corner. But 
What's really neat, I think, is it's using such vibrant colors there. I can't wait till I get to the blue. I think it's going to be amazing. That blue is going to pop, I think. So here I am. I'm in the corner. I'm probably going to do some more of this on this this week because I only got a few days worth of work in. This is again 18 count white Ada, two strands over one, full cross. And I did a combination. I did some coming down this way. I also went across that way. If you have been paying it, uh, you know, watching, um, even if you're not, I seem to do, I don't do pages by my full coverage, but I do like to sometimes either find one edge or the other edge, depending on which one's usually smaller, <laughs> and go all the way to one or the other, just to kind of give me a sense that's the fabric in that direction. It just gives me a sense of what I'm looking at kind of thing. Um, and it always makes me feel a little bit better that I have enough fabric before I put a ton of work into it. And I am a pick a color and go kind of person. I haven't mastered anything like diagonals or anything like that. Um, I just pick and go. So no rhyme or reason to what colors get done when or where, to be honest with you. Every section of this piece got worked on this week, whenever I picked it up this week. Okay, ooh, I have a non-digital, surprise, surprise. This is my Quaker Bloom from Needle Art by Wendy. Right, is that what it's called? Needle Art by Wendy, from the heart, Needle Art by Wendy. Now mine's gonna look very different because I did rechart all the colors. Given the fabric I chose, I just needed something that was a little bit different color-wise. I still have five colors just like this does. And you're gonna see I had changed the the peachy one, I changed it to a pink and I had three flowers that I had done when I realized that pink was not going with all the other shades. I have two of them picked out and restitched, but there is one that still needs. It took me forever to pick these out. So that's where I am. This fabric is so pretty. It's a nice light blue. You know how much I love my blues and it is 18 count summer storm from to die for fabrics. So if I come up close, you can see, so this is the old pink and I had this, this, and this all done in that old pink and it just wasn't meshing with the other four colors I had picked. So these two got picked out and restitched in this new um, pink. In the description box below, I will list all five colors that I'm using. So if one of the colors strikes your fancy or all of them, you can just look right there um, under Quaker Blooms and it should have the information. And I always list, if I know it, the fabric count, color, maker, all of that stuff as well. So one more I have to pull out, but I wanted to do some stitching. So I did stitch as well. And I love it. I really, really love it. This, These notes are gonna fall. This, Excuse me, hopefully I don't move the camera too much. There we go. Really, really enjoying it. This is a fun one. It's the first of her Quakers that I've done. She has some cute, really cute ones though. I don't know if I'm gonna stitch the word bloom. What I'll do is I'll stitch everything but, and then I'll decide if I'm gonna stitch that or something else. I think she does give letters. If I'm, let me see. Yeah, she does. She gives a whole alphabet and she gives a whole zero to nine. So you could, you could personalize it however you wanted. I don't know what I would do. I'll do everything else besides that first and then go from there. So this one's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. Again, it's nice small pieces. You can do something and then have like a little mini finish and then move on. I'm fast becoming really, uh, I'm really enjoying Quaker switching. I really like all the different motifs and all of that kind of fun stuff. Alrighty, next. So I started this next one, um, the Magazine Monthly Cross Stitch Challenge. It is a Facebook group. It's run by Carolyn C. Zook Stitch and Robin Bird's Eye Stitches. I'll put the information down below. They are the ones that started this and run it. It started as a use your magazine pieces type of group, but they are all inclusive and allow pretty much anybody to stitch anything. Doesn't have to be a magazine piece, although a lot of times they say, hey, maybe pick up a magazine piece if you have one for XYZ. Um, so they had an Earth Day pop-up challenge. So just for this week, you picked a piece that 
somehow or other tied into Earth Day or the Earth or something with the Earth. And you stitched on it. You give a start photo and an end photo. And the challenge is 500 stitches. I mean, you can do what you want, right? It's just a chance to pick up something. And I hadn't stitched on this in a few weeks. So I pulled out Earth Laughs by Jan Hicks. I thought this was perfect for Earth Day. So I picked this one and I am, I'm plugging along. I, I think I am just under 500 stitches. I think I'm at like 475. So I have until I want to say Sunday. Earth Day is tomorrow though, correct? Right? I think it's Saturday. I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to look at the calendar. Um, but I do believe we have an, at some point on Sunday. I might take a picture and post on Saturday just when I'm done. This one will get some more time though. Now this one is a change. I have to, a lot of times with my notes, I put a little underline so I know. This is a 20 count. This is my only non 18 count you're seeing. Uh, most of the time, every once in a while I'll have a 16 count. And this is my only project in 20 count right now. Everything else is 18 if I ever forget to tell you. I am stitching this with the Cosmo thread. It's charted with that, but it does give a DMC alternative. I just, for the heck of it, I found the Cosmo on Etsy. They're about a dollar nine ish a skein, and it doesn't take too many. So I said, oh, let's just try it, you know, see what it's like. It's nice. I don't see myself running out and getting Cosmo and, and stitching everything with it, but you know, it's nice. And um, I'm doing one strand which is something that is also new for me. That is something that I have never tried before. And I am doing, um, I'm gonna have to look back for my notes because what I need to start doing is having a paper and pen here so that I can write down all the things that I'm talking to you about. So the description box will have everything. Needlebug, Needlebug has a fantastic, I'm putting my notes down because that, tape is going to fall off. So I'm just going to put it here. So if I look down, that's why. Usually I have it attached to the, the holder there so I can just look and see, but it's determined to fall this week. Needlebug has a fantastic YouTube tutorial on a loop start with one strand. Now I recently saw somebody do a tutorial on pin stitch with one strand on, or pin stitch on Ada, because I had only ever seen them on even weaves or linens and all that. Uh, so I, you know, I could look at that, but I, the loop start with the one strand here on the Ada works. I've, I've kind of got in a groove. I, once this project is put aside, I kind of, I forget a little bit, but as soon as I get going with it again, I remember, or I just look back at her video and check it out. It's a wonderful video and it's really easy to follow if I can follow, <laughs> at least for me. And I have trouble because I do stitch lefty. So tutorials sometimes are difficult for me because I'm opposite of most people with my stitching. But there we are. And what did I do? I did all of this flower and I started, I did, I brought down a lot of the border. Most of the butterfly, I started the words. The words will be easy, so I might be able to do some more of those. I don't know where I'm going to go next um, for this, but I do have to at least one more stitching session before the challenge is up. And then I was thinking this one might be fun. Um, especially if I do something like the border, because then that would just be, it's it's a repetitive um, border. Like if I wanted to do a stitch with me, because I know many of you want me to do a stitch with me in my new porch. I thought this might be fun. And uh, we can also kind of chat about the one strand loop start uh, type of thing as well. So you might see this one in an upcoming um Stitch with me. I was thinking, cause you know, I never know what to talk about in those, but I have lots of new subscribers from, since I've started, I've been doing this now over three years and um, maybe I'll do kind of like a get to know me kind of thing and go back with my background and all about me and so on and so forth. Or if there's something else you want to know about, feel free to, and I can chat about that. Okay, my very last piece. I pulled this one out for some car stitching on Wednesday. And it is, you know, this is my car stitch. I love this one as my car stitch or any of the others in this series. This is, these have been my forever car stitch. They're also good for zoom stitching because I do them one color monochromatically. 
Jardin Privé. This is the Summer Quaker. I've got two out of the four com fully complete. So here we are. This is an 18 count My Sunshine from Be Stitch Me. And I'm using DMC 823 as the color of floss for all four of them. And I built, I made the bird and I did all of this section right here. I did a lot of the little kind of little pieces. So I concentrated on this side. Unfortunately, on the drive home, it was dark. We didn't, we didn't get to leave Pennsylvania until I think it was eight or a little after. So I couldn't, I couldn't stitch in the car on the way home. So I just stitched on the way there. And that's it. Super exciting with this one. I love these. I really enjoy these. Even though they are similar in theme, the different things and the motifs are different enough that I find I'm not getting tired of these. Because I start with um, these long, whether they're seasonally or yearly, like monthly kind of things. And you start to get a little, they get repetitive, right? And so then you're like, oh, another one with this same border or whatever and so on and so forth. And so I find it sometimes a little hard to keep up with it. But these, I really am enjoying these still. Really no problem with those. All right, so plans. Plans, this weekend is 24 hours of cross stitch. I have never, ever done 24 hours of cross stitch, even with, I'm, well, I'm team sleep, although I don't always sleep very well. Um, I very rarely stay up late because then by then I'm exhausted. So um, I do sleep as best I can. But even over the three-day period, I never get 24 hours. So I aim for, I call it a half marathon, and I go for 12. I know that half marathon is not, it's 13.1, but half of 24. So that's what I call it. So I try to do a 12-hour stretch if I can. It's a little loosey-goosey because I count stitches. I don't count time. So I don't necessarily... I kind of know how much I stitch in an hour, depending on the project. And so I can kind of figure out what I have. It's just a kind of fun thing that I do, but I'm not strict with it. And there is a 24 hour cross stitch Facebook group if you are interested in it. And it is cool on these weekends because people will show all their stitching from the weekends. Um, and 24 hours cross stitch is Jen Lee. And um, so anyway, but along with 24 Hours of Cross Stitch, I am in the Whip Warriors group, which is a closed group. It was previously called No New Starts. It is not a No New Start only, because you know I wouldn't be a part of it otherwise. I have to have my starts this weekend. And I don't know if they purposely coincided it with 24 Hours of Cross Stitch, but it is a Whip Frenzy weekend, which means now it's already started. It started at 10 o'clock my time last night, but I was going to, well, I wasn't in bed yet, but I was done stitching by 10 o'clock last night. So I haven't done any projects yet, but it's a three day period. It's over the weekend. I think it's three days. I don't think it's four. I don't know. I'd have to look, but it's, it's over the next three ish days and you stitch on between one to 200 stitches on a project and try to see how many of your projects you can touch. So I found that really fun. They don't do it every month, although they did do it last month. I actually really enjoy it. I wouldn't mind it if they did it more often um, because it's fun. I like it. Uh, because it gets me a chance to touch a whole bunch of projects. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, it, it is one of those where you have to take pictures at, at the beginning and the end. And that was a new thing for me. I never, I never really take pictures in progress of my projects. Um, but doing these kind of Facebook groups, I've had to learn how to do them and upload them. And so it was a little learning curve, but it's fine. And I do it just for events. I don't do it otherwise. And once the events are over, I delete all the pictures. I don't keep them. So I don't keep records of anything like that. Uh, I got enough pictures in there. <laughs> I don't want a whole bunch of others. But uh, so that's my plans for the weekend. I said to Mo, I said, it's 24 hours and whip frenzy. And Beth, uh, the steadfast stitcher, she has a crafts and books group. And it is, she's opened up the Zoom room for a good portion of the weekend. So I said to him, you need to go find some things to do because I want to Zoom and stitch. So we'll see what happens. I don't think that's necessarily <laughs> going to be how my weekend is because he works hard in the week and he wants to hang out with me during the weekend. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what we're going to do. Weather is supposed to be nicer tomorrow. 
than Sunday. So maybe I can eke out on Sunday some extra stitching time. And I don't know when Aston Villa is playing this weekend. Because you know we have to be home to watch that. They're doing great. They're doing great. Thank you for those of you who looked for me and helped me out with some potential stitches for that. I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what my plans. I don't really know what my plans hold this weekend. We're usually very casual with plans unless there's something specific we're doing so so that's that's it plan wise and 25 7 will be my philadelphia piece everything else is up for grabs all right shopping i did do a little bit of shopping and i wanted to show you a few different things there we go so the first uh, bit of shopping every once in a while i like to go and i get i love these i really really enjoy these um they're what are they called? Either art books or thread keepers or things like that. And I like to stitch, uh, to stitch. Well, I do. I do like to stitch, but I like to buy them from Allegro Stitches. I haven't tried them from anywhere else, but Amy Clarissa is a floss tuber. Um, and she is a phenomenal seamstress as well. And so I have bought them from her. So they're, you know, they're nice and I love this one. I love the bright colors, kind of surfboards. So, you know, I mean, me, beachy. And it just has a nice um, snap on it. And so if I'm in the car, I don't even unsnap it. What I do is I have it next to me. And when I'm done with the thread, I just stuff it in there type of thing. Um, I have these in all the different places that I stitch as well as in the different bags that I take for stitching. So I was looking at least for one more. I'll probably pick up a few because they're fun. And... Um, I picked one up and I picked up a second one, which may or may not be for you all. Stay tuned. Um, I picked up, there's a couple more, but I think they, they might be for other people. So <laughs> I'm not going to show those yet because at some point, if, if they're not wanted by other people, then you might get them yourselves. Um, but anyway, this one is mine. I love the bright colors and the look, but Amy Clarissa's shop is on Etsy. I will link it below. It's Allegro Stitches and she sells... So that's the Ort books. I think I went right to the Ort book section. But she also sells, she makes other things. She makes bags, pouches, um, mug rugs, desk organizers, a whole bunch of things. So it's a lot of fun. I'll link her down below if you'd like to check her out. All right. Then, of course, you know me and fabric, right? There's always fabric in my future. And um, because that is, I was talking with a friend yesterday on Zoom. And you know how we all have what we like to collect, right? So some people really like to just collect patterns and they buy patterns and patterns and patterns. Some people like to do project bags and maybe have 50 project bags or scissors or whatever it happens to be. My favorite thing to kind of collect and use is fabrics. So that's what I do. And we were joking because I was talking about stitching on the 20 count. She's like, oh, you're going to need some more 20 count. I said, I can't get any 20 count because I have so much 18 count, maybe a piece here or there for a specific project, but I have to use all of my 18 count. So everything you're going to see, the three pieces that I have to show you are for 18 count Ada. One of my favorite places to buy from, and you know, if you go in the description box below, I list about six or seven hand dyers. That's not all of them by any means. And I use others as well, but these happen to be ones that I check on a fairly regular basis and if I need a specific color, they're probably the places I go to first. And one of the places that I really do enjoy buying from is Kimberly from To Die For Fabrics. She's out of Florida, I believe. And um, she dyes, the, the beginning part of this year, what she's been doing is she's been doing a dyeing, a lot of ready to ship. So if it's in the shop, on the Etsy shop, it's ready to go. You can, she also has a standalone site that only shows all of her colors. You can request any of those colors. You can request a custom, lots of different stuff. Uh, she's got great reviews if you want to look on the review section. Um, and so you can always request something as well. I think in May 1st, she's opening up her entire catalog for requests. And she's been adding quite a bit lately. So um, in that uh, hand dyer section, their, their link is below. So I got, a, I didn't get any blues. There's no blues, no greens here. 
totally, I know, I know, you're going to be shocked. So this first, they're all 18 count. This first one is called Peach Hibiscus. How fun is that? I might consider this one for my Autumn Quaker by Jardin Privé. So I've been doing the Quakers in kind of brighter colors. Now, this isn't super bright per se, but it is definitely a brighter shade. And I think that the navy blue DMC would look really nice on this. So I'm going to pick maybe two or three shades that I think would go good for that last uh, stitch of that set and do a floss toss, throw the flosses on and see which one works for that. So that's the first one. And then I do like to have some neutrals because I do use them. So they are useful. I don't just do all brights. This one's called River Stone. Isn't that nice? I thought that was really pretty. It's beigey, but it's, um, it's not like a yellow beige, I would say. Maybe it's a cooler beige, browner beige than a yellow. So there's that one. And then the last one, it's called Wicker. She's recently done a whole bunch of shades of kind of tans, peaches. Like this one is almost peachy to me. Um, but she's recently dyed a whole slew of those kinds of shades. And I, I tell you, if you like her fabric, join her Facebook group because she posts there the new colors she may have dyed. And then she says, I'm uploading them to the Etsy site because there was one I wanted and it was in my cart as I was shopping. And so when somebody, if there's one left of something and somebody else puts it in their cart, sometimes Etsy will notify you. And darned if that, by the time I went to check out, it was sold, it was sold out. So I couldn't get it after all. Um, I can request the color from her, but um, you do want to, if there's a color you absolutely love, I would suggest getting it sooner rather than later because they do sell out. All right. And oh, the very last thing I, I bought. See, good thing I have my notes because I would have totally forgot. If you watch Leanne's Small Town Stitches, you've seen this one. And I've seen her stitch it or show it every video this year because it is her temperature chart. And every time I see it, it looks so good. I love it, love it, love it. And it is, so what's the actual title? Um, Mini Stars Temperature Pattern. And it is from Zara Z-A-H-R-A -A Design Studio. And I will link them down below under the shopping section. And they have probably seven or eight different temperature designs. And they have some really cool, like 3D geometric designs. If you like any of that kind of stuff, I have a few that I've, I've been eyeballing. I just think they're so cool looking at them. They really do look 3D. It's so cool. But anyway, I picked this one up. And what what's cool is you, it's actually, I believe, a spiral. Well, sort of a spiral. You do the outer edge, then you keep going in, in, in. And you do the the temperatures that way. Now this is going to be a project. I'm doing this as a, I have an idea. I'm going to do birth years um, and stitch my birth year, Mo's birth year, Megan's and Connor's. And what I will do, I think is like, I'll scrapbook them. And one two page spread will be Mo and myself. Mo is a year older than me. So he was born a year before me. And then Megan and Connor were born uh, they're two years apart. Well, just under, they're 21 months apart, but they're in two different years, right? So they'll be on the next double page spread. So I thought that would be kind of cool. What would be really neat with Mo and I being a year apart, you can see what the temperature pictures look like from one year versus the following year. And what I thought was kind of cool with that, because I remember my mom always said that when I was born, it was, now I'm an October baby. And she said it was frigid people anybody coming into the hospital to visit it was like crazy cold and I happened to look so I went I was curious I went and I looked at the October uh chart and temperatures for that year and it it's really crazy so it was a warm October up to two days before I was born I mean I want to say like in the 70s and it might even hit 80 now I was born in Connecticut so you know in October we're not usually seeing that unless it's kind of that late summer kind of thing. And then I was born and it was like 30 degrees. <laughs> there was this huge drop. So I'm really 
interested to see how the colors are going to look so different. And then I think for everybody's birth date, I want to do whatever color will be designated, but I want to maybe mix something sparkly in just to designate the birth date type of thing. But you're going to see the colors so different from that October 21st and I was October 23rd and it's just going to be this huge difference in color. I mean, not even anywhere along the same spectrum because it's going to be like a 40, 50 degree drop. So I thought that was kind of cool. So that's my overarching plan. I'll probably start with my year and then do Moe's and then <laughs> if I'm tired with it, maybe it's just Mo myself. But I thought it'd be kind of cool to do it with the kids too. But that's just a long-term project. And I think what I'll do is I'll grab the flosses that are designated. I haven't really looked at the chart yet. I think I'd like, you know how much I like blue. Um, I would like to do them on the same blues if possible. So it's the same fabric all the way around and then just have the different temperatures with the flosses. So that's a long-term project goal, but I thought it would be fun. And um, if anybody's doing a historical one, your favorite historical site for temperatures, if you could just you know, drop me a note. I would really appreciate it. I did a little bit of searching and I was, I did find one, but I don't know if it's the best. Um, I had trouble originally finding something kind of thing. And the directions were kind of weird and change, strange. And so any, any guidance you can give with that, I'd really appreciate it. So that's it. That's my shopping. All righty. Giveaways. I have a bunch of giveaway business to do. So let's get going with that. I have a reminder to give. I have unfortunately a repick to do. So we're going to start with that. I, with my giveaways, I do ask that you contact me within two. Um, and I'm even going to do a quick look on Instagram. I checked my emails and spams this morning, but I didn't check my Instagram messages. Let's see. I'm going to make sure. I, I tried to the very last second. Yep, I'm not seeing anything. Um, Because you can either email me or you can DM me on Instagram and then uh, give me your address. So I try to the very last second check. And then after two weeks, I do unfortunately pick a new winner because I can't keep track of all of this stuff. I need to kind of I'm gonna put that old name right there. So we're talking about the Coastal Welcome piece. It is uh, designed by Ursula Michael. It's Imaginating Design. And I have the names in just a little baggy because this week's giveaway, it, the names are in the blue bowl. So let me mix them around so we can get... I have to separate. There we go. Oh, no, there's two. Here we go. Who's our new winner? So our new winner for the Coastal White Welcome is Barbara Bryce. Congratulations, Barbara. If you could get back to me with your address, I will mail this out to you. Okay, so there's that. I'm gonna put that one up there so I don't lose the name. Now this was last week I called the name, so they have one more week. Nancy, Nancy Nunnenkamp, you won the little cottage from Hands on Design. So please get back to me before next video because I would love to mail this out to you. So that's just a one week reminder. And then let me put my notes here, put that right there. This week I am picking for the flosses. So I picked up, these were brand new flosses that were shown at market from Classic Color Works and we have Fields of Green and Cottage Daisies. Aren't they beautiful? Really pretty and together they're gorgeous. Look at how pretty that is. What a beautiful color combination. So I asked you to say the word fields. Fields, fields. I looked at everything. I always try to check that just to make sure. I talk fast. I know that. So sometimes I might not be, you might not hear it the exact way I might have thought it. So I do try to make sure I include everybody. So my winner on that is, let me see. Take a name. Who's my winner here? Deborah Pappas. Congratulations, Deborah. You have won the flosses. So if you could please get back to me with your address, I will send those out to you. So I'm going to put that here because I don't want, whoops, I don't want to lose your name in among the other names. 
And then this week's giveaway, I did buy when I was shopping at Allegro Stitches, I said I wanted to share with all of you. So I picked up this one. Isn't it beautiful? So let me open it up. There we go. That's what the outside looks like. That's what it's like on the inside. So it's a nice, cute, it's great for travel. It's great for if you just want to have an extra one wherever you happen to be stitching. I stitch in like five different spots in the house. I don't have a designated one spot stitching. So um, I love having these wherever so I don't have to be kind of taking things everywhere. So I'm going to ask you to say when I was... Uh, when we lived in Connecticut and every summer I would take the kids to the butterfly uh, museum in Massachusetts and it was called magic wings. So I'm going to ask you to say the word wings for the butterfly wings. If you are up there, it's in the Deerfield, Massachusetts area. And I believe last time I mentioned it, somebody did say it was still open. It's not that far from Yankee candle. So we would do like a full trip. We would do the butterflies and the candles and that's the flagship Yankee candle. So that's the big one. Um, it was wonderful, beautiful. I always enjoyed and found so much relaxation and comfort in going here. Now, if you don't, I mean, butterflies are like bug-like when you look at them close, right? So, and they do land on you if at times, not always. So if that kind of makes you uneasy, it wouldn't be the place for you. But if you don't mind it, it is a fabulous visit if you're ever, ever, ever up in that area. So if you say that, a wings... I'll put your name in the blue bowl and I will pick that next video. And like I said, these are invaluable. I love them. Alrighty. That's it. That is all the stitching stuff. Oh, my stitch on. <laughs> my top there pulling a little bit, but you know, that's all right. Um, you know, the older you get the area up here sometimes just gets larger. All right. Um, Anyway, <laughs> moving on, um, that's the stitching. If that is all you are here for, and you're still here, well, you're awesome, uh, and everyone's awesome, but thank you for staying, and uh, I hope you have a great stitchy week, and I'll see you next week. Now we'll talk about life stuff. Again, I do like to designate, and some people mix it all in. I think there's no right or wrong way, frankly. It's whatever works for you, right? It's your channel. You do you. So... Um, but for me, I kind of like it at the end to kind of wrap it up, especially like last week when I started to tear up. I knew I was near the end, so I didn't have to worry about trying to talk about stitching after that. Well, I looked all teary eyed. Um, but I wanted to say again, a huge thank you. I can't tell you. And again, I am so far behind. I cried with comments and emails and t I, I cried, but it was good. It was, it was healthy tears. Do you know what I mean? Like, you all brought so much comfort to me and so much wisdom because so many of you have been in that position. And that's the thing, I guess, that I kind of sometimes forget that there is a whole wealth of wisdom out of life lived and wisdom from everybody out there. And sometimes you think, oh, I mean, well, we're all kind of involved in ourselves, right? Sometimes. So you're not sure what other people's experiences are, but so many of you share the same experiences and we we just have a shared experience of life and so I can't even tell you how many words of wisdom and comfort and how it helped me in so many ways so it, again whether you took the time or whether you just thought it I I have this I I really do think that good thoughts um can be helpful as well so you know I don't you know if you don't comment it's no big deal if you just sent me some good vibes thank you so much even for that but just know that it really really did help um and even though I haven't responded to many of the much of the comments partly because it <laughs> I cried through the first half of the week every time I'd read a comment and then I just have been backed up but um know that you brought a huge amount of comfort to me and made me realize that I wasn't alone in my experiences and that um, hard choices sometimes have to be made, but you do the best you can in life, right? And when it came to things, it's the memories, not the things. And so to remember the memories and not 
feel the guilt about the things, if that makes any sense. That was really huge too, because that was, that was something that was really weighing on me. So I do really appreciate that going forward. Um, just remembering that, you know, and remembering that that actual piece doesn't matter. It's the memories. And I think that's part of why I really want to add more pictures in with my stitches so that if my kids would like to keep the books, there's the memories there and it's all condensed in one thing and they can share the memories with the stitch and kind of thing. So I really feel good about, um, about that. Oh, and speaking of which, when I'm talking about the scrapbooking, I wanted some people's ideas. If you're interested, I did end up, I looked into getting a Zoom account and I did end up getting one. And I was wondering if people would be interested in like a Q and A Zoom on the scrapbooking. Now, if you wanted to just, if, if you weren't sure to commit and you just wanted to stitch while people ask questions, that would also be fine. But I thought maybe I would take some of my projects, maybe try to do some on the Zoom if other people want to do it on the Zoom or if they want to ask questions and so on and so forth. So if that's something you'd be interested in, I can figure out. I don't know how to set up Zooms yet. <laughs> I'm barely able to actually join them. <laughs> I'm not tech savvy, but that's okay. I'm happy with what I do. Uh, but if I can figure out how to do it and all that kind of stuff, if that's something that people would be interested in, I would be happy to do that. I love, I am fast uh, realizing that just because we don't have to be sitting in the same room, we can still share this love of stitching and we can still be friends even if we're far, far apart. So um, let me know. I meant to talk about that during plans and it totally, it wasn't in the notes. So out, out it went. And then the only other thing we did this week was it was senior day on Wednesday, which is why we drove up to Pennsylvania. For those of you who don't know, Megan is a senior in college and she uh, plays lacrosse. She's a, a an athlete, um, a student athlete. And so it was senior day. Uh, they have three more games left of the season. Um, but usually most of the time senior day is not quite the last game. Um, and it happened to be this past Wednesday. And so we went up. Mo took a half day from work. And then we went up. Of course, we stopped at Ikea because that seems to be like the new thing to do. <laughs> we gave ourselves plenty of time. I would really love to know how many steps Ikea is because we start at the one arrow and we walk the entire store. <laughs> and so I'd be curious. Um... But anyway, uh, and then we went over to the school um, and uh, yeah, so, you know, it, senior day uh, ceremonies, you go down with your child on the field, they announce each senior, they give a little blurb about, about them, what their future plans are, um, that kind of thing. And they say, so-and-so is accompanied by blah, blah, blah. And it was nice because they streamed that. So most parents were able to watch it. So they were able to see the little ceremony as well. And uh, yeah, so we did that. And it was a hard fought game. These girls, they've won some of, most of their out of conference games, but they're a small, they're, they're the only girls only school in the conference. So that makes it tougher to get athletes. And they're a small team and they've got injuries, injuries. And they've fought hard, but they haven't won a conference game. And they, they could have won this one. Just some some missed shots and some bad luck. And just, you know, in general, they played so hard and they did so well. I don't know if it was senior day and all the parents there or they're just, they're tough, they're tough little fighters. And so they, it was a fantastic game to go to and they just really tried their hearts out. And then afterwards, um, there was the one of the one of the one or two of the parents I don't uh, remember uh, organized like a little outdoor tailgate so to speak you know buffet ish they they got food brought in it it wasn't like regular ones where everybody brings something it was more food brought in and that kind of stuff and a cake and all of that so we celebrated all of the seniors there's 10 on the team so the team is going to be a very young team after this year um but uh it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the day. It was probably mid sixties. Um, we're in the, if you go up from Delaware, it's the lower, if I'm looking at the, at the, um, 
the map, it's the lower eastern part of Pennsylvania, so below Philadelphia on the east side. The weather was beautiful. It was mid-60s. It was sunny. Um, Bryn Mawr is a gorgeous campus. If you've ever seen pictures of it, um, there's flowers. The flowers were all blooming. The The buildings, very so many of them are like the stone built buildings. So it looks like castles and just, it's a gorgeous place really, um, especially when all the flowers are blooming. We'd walk by some and you could just, the fragrant, the fragrance of the flowers. Of course I laughed with Mo. I'm like, my sinuses are killing me. And sure enough, yesterday I was just this big, I mean, the flowers are gorgeous, but I'm allergic to pretty much everything outside. So, you know, there's that afterwards, but I enjoyed it while I was there. It was just after the fact that I was kind of like, oof boy, <laughs> I'm feeling it now. But it was really a lovely day. And then, like I said, we left. It was probably a little after eight. It's about a two hour drive. So we got home around 10 ish or so. So we were tired by the end of the day, but it was really, really lovely. And it was a nice part of the week. This weekend, no specific plans, really. Um, like I said, I don't know when Aston Villa is playing. So, of course, that always kind of dictates. The season's almost over, and he's so excited because they're in the top half of the table. He's thinking they have chances of Europe football, which my UK friends and my European friends would know about, not so much in the U.S. He's really excited. I think he might be. I, I'm not quite sure it's going to happen this year, but it's a team that's really on the up and up and building. So I'm happy and thrilled for him. Um, so yeah, so that's part of our weekend plans. And then hopefully I can do some zooming or some stitching and joining some stitchy friends as well. And that's about it. Other than that, I don't know. I'm going to, I'm found, I'm almost done finding all the doctors. I found an eye doctor. So next week I do have an eye doctor appointment. That's my big excitement there. Um, but I'm just excited to almost have almost, I just can't find a good dermatologist down here. But other than that, I am. I'm good to go, which is really good because, you know, changing doctors is no fun when you move. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Um, weather is supposed to be nice this weekend. And then in the 50s next week, I'm really hoping they're wrong on that one because I'll be wearing sweatshirts again. We're kind of getting used to this warm, this nicer weather. And it's been set, like, low 70s, high 60s, totally sunny. So it's this beautiful weather. My porch, it's, you know, it's the glass. So the sun comes in, I can open up the windows if I want, or it just makes it nice and toasty and, and comfy. And we get the morning sun. So in the afternoon, you can enjoy it there without the sun blaring in on you. Cause then the sun's at the front of the house at that point. So, um, I've just been enjoying that. And if it gets colder, <laughs> it'll be too cold to be out there. So we'll see, but that's it. Okay. I hope I, I, I'm getting talk. I was going to say talkier and talkier. I made up a word this morning and Mo was laughing at me. I do that. I don't know if anybody else does that. I kind of make up my own words as I go, but it's fun. It could be a word maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been chatty, chatty, chatty. So I hope you got lots of stitching in or maybe you're cooking dinner or whatever you happen to be doing, crafting and some other sort of craft. Uh, I hope you got a chance to get whatever you were doing done. And I hope uh, we got a chance to share a little love of cross stitch. So as usual, oh, today's tea, pineapple lychee hibiscus. I'm a fan of hibiscus. This one though does have stevia leaf in it. It's a little too sweet for me. I used to, I used to enjoy it a bit more than I do now. So once this can is done, I probably won't get it because my taste buds have gotten a little bit more attuned to sweetness and what most people don't find it's too sweet. I do. Um, but hibiscus tea is one of my favorites. I have several different flavors. And so that's what we'll be, what we'd be sipping on uh, this morning after I finish talking with you. And that's about it. I hope you're well. I hope you're safe. I hope you're taking care of yourself emotionally, physically, mentally. Remember you matter and what your feel goodness, your happiness, it all matters. It's super important. Always, always take care of you and then you'll be able to take care of others um, as well. So with that said, I hope this weekend brings or whenever, because I don't know when you're watching this, this weekend, this week, this month, this year, whatever you happen to be watching, I hope it brings you good things. I hope you get a chance to take care of yourself and have some self-care. And until next time, happy stitching.